below. Wrapping 52 there. Now you know why I am talking with a text-to-speech voice, because this is my first time trying this sort of thing out. So, this is Wrapping 52. And this is Daydream Tracer, guest starring in this video. And I will cover the workings of the first person view in Neptunia Virtual Stars. With a guest appearance by Daydream Tracer. As you didn't know, Neptunia Virtual Stars has a first person view that not everybody knows it's even in the game, and it sure has a lot of history going inside it. I have two theories for why it was scrapped. 1. The game was originally going to have switchable first person mode, so one can play the game like a first person and third person shooter, but they ran into a technical issue for this mechanic that they were too lazy to fix, so they removed it in the later builds, while the early builds had it working. Two. Originally, the CPUs played like a first-person shooter, but they scrapped it because the players won't be able to see the characters at all times. However, they forgot to remove it in some areas, as there are a few specific areas that have first-person cameras in. So again, instead of being deleted outright, it was only usable in a few areas of the game. So with all of that out of the way, let's talk about how it works in-game. While in Neo2 Plaza or the Cloud, pressing T, the default keyboard layout will enter first person view. If you are on PS4, R3 triggers it. What makes it interesting for such an overlooked mechanic is that the camera bots, when you move, idle, and even moves along with the animation once you stop moving. The camera even changes height once you switch characters. However, you are limited once you are in first person view, as you can't talk to anyone. Enter shops. or even pause the game, which shows they really didn't got that far in importing it, as they pretty much just left it in the final game with barely any work done besides the movement. You can, however, still use Select Destination to warp in the plaza. By a camera tools, it is possible to see some things that are not seen normally. If you turn on the free camera and then quit out of it, the camera will be back to third person view, but you will still have first person view controls and the camera won't bond, so, if you end up moving, there will be no bonding whatsoever, which looks pretty funny, you know? And here's one more area that you can enter first person in.
One thing I didn't even knew is that, even if the safe area and teleport warp pads don't do anything, while you are in first person, it will still grow once you step in them. There's a bug that is not game breaking, but it is funny to watch. When you set the camera distance to 0%, it will screw up the first person view. So overall, that's all of what first person mode has to offer. First person mode is overall an interesting abandoned idea in Neptunia Virtual Star's development. It gives an idea of what could have been had more work has been done on it. In my opinion, it would be interesting to play the game in the eyes of the goddess or the virtual idols, and could be something for the art mode, aka Gaia. So, what is Daydream Tracer's opinion on it? I personally think it would have been very interesting had they implemented it. It would have been very similar to some of these other titles like Death and Request and all that. But I could see why they decided not to add it. However, there's one more thing with first person mode that I didn't even knew about. As Gratifa students told me on Discord, there was one more area that I didn't even know that's not the O2 Plaza or the cloud that he randomly activated the first person camera in. I don't know where the area that he activated it in, but once he knows about it, I should be able to show it off in a follow-up video, but for now, see you later.